consulting is, we looked a bit inside the black box. We will now speak about the case interview, which is one of the main reasons why interviewing for the top firms is challenging. In reality, McKinsey was pointed out as the toughest company to interview for in the world, according to Glassdoor. And the other two big consulting firms, BCG and Bain, are pretty close by. So where does the case interview fit into the overall hiring process? Well, at McKinsey, and it's pretty much the same to the other consulting firms, the hiring process starts with the screening. The screening is done by HR people, recruiting assistants. And what they do is they look at your CV to identify if you have the leadership traits and the analytical potential to, move to, to be offered a spot at the interview. When you do your CV, you need to remember who is reading it. And the person reading your CV is not going to be specialized in any industry or function. So you need to write in a very simple way. So whenever you do a bullet point, you need to be very simple and specific about what you did. Otherwise, they will not understand. Do you need top grades to pass the screening? Well, not necessarily. You may be a little bit less shiny on the academics, but if you, if you complement it with something distinctive on the behavioral. If you didn't achieve top grades, if you're not the best student in class, but outside of, outside of class you were involved in starting up a company, or you were involved in a project, an interesting project for, for a company, or even for yourself. So if you have an interesting experience outside uni university, that's perfectly legitimate. And McKinsey is looking for people that has a spike in problem solving or in behavioral. It's very rare that you can have a spike on both. It happens, but, but it's very rare. So that's for the CV. The second part is the application form. That's something that you fill online. Before you submit your application, you go there and you have to write uh, some short essays. And they're going to ask you about why do you want to join McKinsey? Why do you want to be a consultant? What is your career aspiration? So they want to get a sense of, of, of the person behind the CV. And on top of that, you may be called to do a problem-solving test. So for one hour, you need to answer 26 questions. And this is something that they use to, to make sure that you don't have any serious problem with numbers. So when you make it through the screening, then you're called for the interviews. And typically, you have two rounds of interviews. There's the first round, which consists of two interviews, and then the second round, which consists of two to four interviews. It depends. So if you are coming straight from university, it's normally two interviews. If you come from an MBA, it's normally four interviews on the second round. So between four and six interviews in total. Where does the case fit? It's an essential part of any interview. The interviews all start in the same way. The interviewing process at McKinsey and at the other firms is very, very structured. It happens always in the same way. So it starts with a chat, a five minutes chat. I would enter the room and ask the candidate, tell me about yourself or tell me about your CV. Or sometimes if I enter the room and I see something on his CV that calls my attention, like that person started up a company, then I will ask something on that. Well, interesting, I see that you started up a company. Tell me more about that. This chat is non-evaluative. You're not really scoring the candidate. You're just getting to know him. And then the candidate speaks for five minutes and you move to the part where you start evaluating the candidate. And that part is first the personal experience interview. The case comes after that. And the case interview is basically giving you a McKinsey-like situation, a McKinsey-like problem, and then seeing how you think about it how you solve it on the spot. And finally, there is some time for Q&A, which is also you're not being evaluated, but it gives you some clues if the candidate is really motivated, if he did his homework and, his, and he prepared for the interview. And why do you think consulting firms use the case interview? Are they trying to inflict pain on candidates, to scare candidates? They're trying to see how your thought process is. Can you structure a problem? Can you actually find out what the real problem is? Can you, and can you present it? I think it's more mm -hmm. a process that is interesting. Yeah. You th can you get the conclusion in the end? Yeah, yeah. You touched upon some important points. It's really not about conclusion, it's the process, indeed. 
And the reason why the case interview is so important for consulting firms is that, first of all, on the candidate side, it's job related. So the best way to test if you know how to solve a problem is to give you a problem and see you solving it. On the other hand, for the candidates, it is also fair. Why is it fair? Because it doesn't depend on your background. You don't need to have a business background to ace a case. What you need is structure and logical thinking. So in terms of the assessment of the candidates, well, the assessment is focused on the problem-solving skills. But I would also be assessing the fit of the candidates. And what is fit? Fit is if the candidate is challenged. Is he thrilled by solving the problem? So the fit is not something that you, that I as an interviewer would specifically grade, but it is a general feeling that I am left with. And then for the assessor, for the interviewer, it, is, it makes a lot of sense because the, the case interview is a very structured way of interviewing. We always follow the same structure regardless of the case we do. And the second thing is that we are very calibrated. As, as an experienced interviewer, I would go to trainings and we would, be, we would make sure that a candidate would be evaluated the same way no matter which interviewer would be uh, conducting the interview. So for those reasons, the case interview is really a very good tool, a very useful tool. It's highly correlated with the performance that a consultant will have in problem solving. Now, the types of cases that you will find mirror the types of projects that consulting firms do. So we spoke about them in terms of functions and in terms of industry. So where do the cases come from? Is there a genius somewhere in the basement of the McKinsey headquarters making those cases? Well, no. The cases, of course, some of the cases come from a library. And typically, I would start using those cases because they are written in full. And so I would have the, the perfect answer to grade the candidates. But then I started using more and more my own cases because I would do a project and I would find an interesting situation. I would think this would give a good case. So then I would do my own case. I would not write it fully. But I would have, of course, the main points that the candidate should cover. And there are very strict guidelines in how to do those cases. And, and you need to submit your case for approval in order to be able to use it. Now, the advantage of using the library cases is that the work is done for you. And some of the cases are, are really fun because you do it on the iPad. I like those cases where I would have the iPad, I would show the candidate the iPad, and then he would start uh, clicking, drawing a graph on the iPad, so it would be a bit more interactive. For the other, well, you, you do it yourself, so of course I would do a few graphs and all that myself. It was less interactive, but I like it more because I can probe the candidate in something that I did myself. So there's more room for uh, creativity. This is typically what the more experienced interviewers follow, their own cases. Well, regardless of the source, they all need to meet the very high McKinsey standards for a case. They need to make sure that they cover all the relevant skills. And we will speak about what are those skills in a moment. Before that, let's have a, an idea, a very introductory idea of how is it a case. Well, a case has three main parts. It starts with a setup. And the setup is something very broad, very open. You may be asked something like, our client is an airline company, how can it increase profitability? And that's it. It's a very open question. So you can go in any direction. With this setup, you start really going to the core. The core is really solving the problem. We're going to take a look at what are the steps you do in it. But this is where your problem solving and your interaction with the, with the interviewer take place. And then finally, you need to close the case. You need to say, OK, based on my analysis, based on the things we discussed, this is my conclusion. And this is my recommendation. So how does this process work in more detail? The setup phase is a pretty fast one. It takes two to three minutes. And it's very simple. For the setup, you give a bit of context. Our client is a major corporation doing this and that. And then you define the problem. And the problem they are facing is this. At this stage, the, the candidate may ask a few questions. Oh, just to clarify, so is the corporation also in this market or only on that market? So that's inter it's interactive. And then you jump to the core of the case, which takes 20 to 25 minutes. 
And here, typically, the first thing you need to do is to break down the issue. So to structure the case. That's the only way you can address it. So the first thing you do is do an issue tree to break down the problems. And then your interviewer, if it's at McKinsey, your interview is going to lead you in the interview. It's an interviewer-led process. So your interviewer is going to say, OK, I want you to explore a certain issue that you highlighted here. And here is some information that you may use and think about. And then you start analyzing one issue. And then he may throw another issue at you and another issue at you. And in the end, you are after you went through all this, these issue analysis, you're going to come up with your recommendation or the synthesis of it all. And it should take two to three minutes to wrap it up. So what are the interviewers looking for when you are doing a case? Of course, that most of all, your problem-solving skills. The behavioral skills are, are assessed in the personal experience part of the interview. Now, these are the, the, the things that are formally evaluated. You have an evaluation form where you rate the candidate. But there are two other things that you are unconsciously also evaluating the candidate on. One is the fit. Do I see him as a potential consultant? Does he enjoy what he's doing? Is he challenged, thrilled to be solving a case? And then the second thing is the business acumen, like the intuition that the candidate has for business. Is he able to, to understand where, where is the money coming from? Is he able to understand the dynamics of competition? So it doesn't mean that you need specialized knowledge in an industry, but it means that you need a bit of intuition, a bit of sense, like a smell for business. So let's focus now on the problem-solving skills. So what exactly are the problem-solving skills? There are three skills that we are evaluating in candidates. The first one is the analytical skills. So the analytical skills means how you break down a problem. There's a very, a very ambiguous problem. How do you identify what are the relevant parts of that, pro of that problem? And then if you understand the relationship betwe between those different parts, that's one thing. The second thing is your quantitative skills. How at ease are you with numbers? How at ease are you in understanding quantitative relationships? So things like performing estimations, performing calculations, understanding what if I change the price here? What is going to be the effect on the bottom line? So it's a sense for numbers here. And then the final thing is the conceptual skills or the conceptual thinking. And this is more how you can infer relationships, how you can draw conclusions and how you can wrap it up, an analysis, into a recommendation. So how do interviewers assess these three skills during the case interview? If we take here the structure of a case interview, typically, when you start with <coughs> the issue breakdown, it's all about analytical skills. Are you able to structure the problem? It's a very vague problem. You start cutting it down into small pieces that you can address. So the first part is all analytics. The second part typically has a mix of analytics and maybe some conceptual. It's not always like this. This would be what I normally would follow. So it may be analytical because you ask, okay, so you identify this issue. What are the things that inside that issue can affect, for example, profitability? But then you inject some, some conceptual thinking into the process. You, you may give him, okay, so let me show you this data, this graph. This graph shows, I don't know, customer profitability. What, what is your takeaway? And how does that reflect on the issue breakdown that you did before? And here they want you to conceptualize. OK, I see here a trend going up and down. Oh, I see here that this is not so profitable. So maybe there's an issue here. So they want you to draw a conclusion from what, from what they are presenting. This is all about conceptualizing, drawing inferences. Then you move to a second issue. Typically, you're going to have one which is going to be all quantitative. So they're going to tell you, OK, based on that, what would happen if you would raise the price? Or based on that, estimate the potential to launch a new product with this information. And if here you arrive at a number and you say, well, I think uh, our market can be for 520 million US dollars. Well, you need to have a feeling for that. OK, so what is the market share that that means? Well, maybe it's not very reasonable. Maybe I did something wrong. Maybe it's not 500 million. Maybe it's just 52 or whatever. So, the quantitative skills is processing all that quantitative data and then having a sense 
for the numbers, having a feeling for those numbers. Is it realistic? Is it not realistic? And what does it mean for the client? Then the third issue typically has a bit more of, of quantitative skills and then you start putting some conceptualizing because you are uh, wrapping up and you want to draw conclusions and those conclusions are basically the synthesis is the overall summary, the overall conclusion or recommendation. So as you see, the skills are tested multiple times. For example, analytical skills are tested here and the bits here. Conceptual skills are tested here and here. And the quantitative skills are tested here and here. So this means that if the first time doesn't go so well, you still have another opportunity to prove that you have those skills. On each of these issues, there is one skill that is the main focus. And then there is another skill that is also there as a secondary skill. And this is what allows the interviewer to rate you. And how do they do that? They do that in a very standardized form. So we have something called the evaluation form. And that form is where we actually assign the levels that the candidate demonstrated in those skills. And the levels go from 0 to 3. Level 0 means that it's a big problem. It's a no-go. Yeah, that, that candidate would have serious problems if you were to go to consulting. So there's nothing we can do, unfortunately. Level 1 means the candidate meets the, is a bit below the bar. We call it meet minus. It means that it would likely have some performance issues. The level 2 means meets plus. So it meets our high standards of problem solving. And then the level 3 would mean he's distinctive. He's really like a top performing consultant. Very rare that, that you have candidates on level 3. And this is the skills that you test on the problem solving. Then you have another assessment for the behavioral. But of course, the, the two combine. In the end, when you are having a decision meeting and you need to decide, is this candidate going to move forward? It's the combination of the two that matters. So you have, on the one hand, the problem solving. And of course, if it's zero, it's not even up for consideration. So from one, two, and three. And then the behavioral from one, two, and three again. And who do you hire? If someone is distinctive on problem solving and distinctive on behavioral, it's a strong hire. So there's no doubt. If both interviewers agree, it's of course the best scenario. Very rare. Now, if someone has a spike on problem solving and meets the bar or is above the bar at behavioral, it's a hire. And it's also a hire if he has a spike in his behavioral skills and meets the bar in problem solving. So this means that behavioral skills are as important as problem solving skills when it comes to hiring. McKinsey wants a spike on one of them. In an ideal world, on both. But if you have a spike on one of them, it's a higher. If there is no spike on problem solving and behavioral, it's a bit of a problem. Typically, it's a turn down. With a few exceptions, that's why there's a yellow color here. So sometimes, if I would feel that that candidate would be coachable, so he didn't perform so well, I cannot rate him as distinctive, but I feel that there's something on him. Maybe he was a bit nervous, maybe he was not fully prepared. I feel I could coach him. Well, then I may, in the decision meeting, argue for him and ask to give him a second chance, which is called the ace it or break it. That's a special interview where you go there and either you ace it, you do everything right, or if there's any more doubt, you break it. So unfortunately, it's a turn down. And then all the others are a turn down. So if you are very, very good at problem solving, but you're not meeting the bar for behavioral skills, it's a turn down. And there's no more discussion. Now, the interesting thing is that it's very, very hard to get to the distinctive level of problem solving. But it is not so hard to get into a distinctive level of behavioral skills. Because here, it's about skills that you need to develop. Here, those skills, you have them. You just need to be able to communicate them.